Life Law 4. You cannot change what you do not acknowledge. You never find yourself until you face the truth. Pearl Bailey. Why you should read this life law. To get real, quit living in denial so you can open your eyes to what in your life is not working. Emily absolutely hates history class. And when I say hate, I mean really, really hate. She would rather get a root canal than sit through boring discussions about dead people. But not wanting to totally waste time, she uses that period to read magazines or write notes to her friends. After all, that's kind of current history, right? If it's in a magazine day, she takes her seat towards the back of the classroom, pulls out the magazine, and puts it inside her notebook. The teacher drones on and on, his voice a flat line monotone. He's about as exciting as watching paint dry. He's the worst, Emily tells her friends. If I'm lucky, I fall asleep. Not that he ever notices. He just stands there, head down, reading his notes. He doesn't even know we're there. Emily figures that her saving grace is that Mr. Excitement determines the victim's grades based entirely on two tests, the midterm and the final, so problem solved. On the night before the midterm, she starts to play catch up. She grinds up some of her little brother's Ritalin, snorts it, and begins the well-known calming drill. She studies all night, totally wired on the Ritalin. She is convinced that it is helping her remember all the facts, all the dates, all the historical figures she had not taken the time to read about during the semester. One night to cover one and half a month of material. No problem. Emily is feeling really confident that she is, no doubt, studying harder than anyone else in the class. I have a deadlock on an A here, she tells herself. How could I not? I've studied all night. Just before class the next day, Emily slips into the girls' bathroom and starts more Ritalin. I worked so hard for this class, she tells her friends. I studied all night. It's ridiculous how much work I have done for this one class, but I'm ready. Indeed, she sails to the test, the first one in her class to finish. She is sure that she aced it. Two days later, the test comes back. F, 43. Emily has failed, and she has failed big time. How could that happen? Emily complains to her friends, trying to hold back tears. I pulled an all-nighter studying. Are you sure you were ready for that test? A friend asks. No question, Emily says. I worked so hard for that class. I was ready as I could be. It's just not fair. Now maybe it's just me, but I think Emily might be full of it on this, ready as I could be business. I think she may be canning herself. In fact, it's complete denial about what it takes to get by in school. Denial is not just a river in Egypt. Let me give you my definition of denial. Denial, hard-headed, stubborn, and immature, refusal to be honest with yourself about the stupid, insensitive, self-destructive things you do to jerk yourself around. Unwillingness to acknowledge problems because you wish they weren't there. Refusal to take ownership in whatever is not working in your life. Pretty harsh, huh? But we all do it to some degree. We all take ourselves about what's really going on in our lives. We also all trick ourselves about what's going wrong with our lives. But the moment we do that, we start hurting ourselves. We start killing our hopes and dreams. Because when we turn to denial, we kill what might have been a real chance to overcome a problem. And we kill the solution that might have worked if we had just tried. Life is full of obstacles, and if we pretend otherwise, they don't get removed or overcome. It's like ignoring a huge speed bump and hitting it at full speed. It ruins a smooth ride. To deny your problems means to lie to yourself about those problems. You lie to yourself in two ways. One, you make stuff up that isn't even almost true. And or two, you leave stuff out. Both forms of lying are equally dangerous. Not telling yourself that something is wrong and therefore letting it just build is sure to catch up with you. Emily was totally in denial about what she had to do to pass history. She did not want to have to study history every day so that she remained in denial, telling herself that there was another way to get through the class. She conned herself into believing that she could cram her way through the midterm. But you know, because you've been there, that part of her knew the truth and part of her knew that a bomb was going to hit on test day. 
or picking on her. But how about you? Are you living in denial about any part of your life? That simply means that you are not dealing with the parts of your life that are not working. Living in denial means that you are not giving yourself the chance to improve. So in keeping with my harsh definition of denial, here's some harsh advice. Stop BSing yourself. You've got a problem, admit it. Get real. Pull your head out of the clouds and be honest. You're not a moron. You know exactly what's not working in your life. And you just need to find the guts to admit it so you can start changing it. And let me tell you, whatever is bothering you is not going to go away. Remember when I was a little kid? I used to think that if I closed my eyes, you couldn't see me, and whatever I didn't want to see would disappear. But of course, we grow out of that. Or do we? If you're unwilling to acknowledge a problem, or if you're unwilling to acknowledge a self-destructive emotion, it won't go away, even if you do have your mental eyes closed. How do you ever expect to change something if it doesn't go on your to-do list? Lying to yourself is as dumb as going to the doctor who asks you if you're having any pain anywhere, and you say no. Even though one leg hurts like hell, what happens? The doctor doesn't deal with or treat your bum leg. How dumb is that? You killed any chance to get fixed, so you limp out the door the same way you limped in. If you're living in denial, that is exactly what you're doing. You are killing any chance to fix the problem, and you'll just keep on limping through life. If you're a pain at school and no one wants to have you around, admit it. If you get unbelievably jealous and possessive of anyone you ever date, admit it. If you're just so convinced that your parents are out to get you that there is no way you can ever get along with them, admit it. If you are incredibly lazy and spend every afternoon and evening listening to music or chatting online instead of studying, admit it. If you lie to people all the time about what you did because you think your real life is a total bore, admit it. If you hate the way you're living your life, get real about it or it will never change. If you recognize that you're behaving in self-destructive or dangerous ways, have the guts to say so, or you will never get it under control. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Langston Hughes I saw some of my own friends deny themselves into trouble repeatedly. I had several friends in particular who did, not, who did a lot of partying on weekends. Every Monday they'd come to school telling funny stories about how they went out drinking and what they did after they got drunk. At first, and by outward appearances, they seemed okay. Their weekend binge drinking didn't seem to have the big of an effect on them. Some of them were really drinking heavily, and inevitably, the weekend binges began to affect their functioning the rest of the week as well. We all started to notice some major changes in my friend James. Even some of those who ran around with him on those wild weekends began to get nervous and change the way they were acting because of how they were seeing it affect James. He, of course, didn't see it as a problem at all. He was in denial. Life was one big party. I watched him lose his girlfriend because he acted like such a jerk when he drank. He would become rude and mean, and she was totally repulsed by it. He didn't see it that way. He began to lose his edge on the basketball court because he was so out of shape. Teammates started ragging on him because he wasn't holding up his end of the deal. Again, he didn't see the problem. His grants began to tank. Yet he just kept on partying. I finally mentioned it to him one time after practice, and he just said, Hey, I'm okay. Don't sweat it. What are you, my mother? It soon got worse. Jane was drinking at a party and got totally out of control. We were at one of our friend's houses in a neighborhood that James didn't know very well, when all of a sudden the cops showed up, and everyone took off running. James, who was by then staggering drunk, jumped a back fence, ran down a dark alley, made several turns, crossed a busy street, and found himself at a Taco Bell on the access road of a major highway. He had no idea where he was and no money to call a taxi or a friend to come get him. He was lost and stranded. Finally, he started trying to find his way back to the house where the party had taken place. There isn't a lot of foot traffic on major highways at night, and a police car pulled up, stopped him, and started quizzing him on who he was and where he was going. James was barely coherent and had no good answers. He thought the party was on a street that started with an L, but it was in Lindell or maybe Leland. He couldn't say. 
The nice officers decided to give James a little ride and a place to stay for the night. He was arrested for public intoxication and taken downtown to the city jail, where he spent the night. The next morning, the school and his parents were informed as to what had happened. This was not good for the life and times of James. He was suspended from school and kicked off the basketball team. This eventually resulted in the loss of an athletic scholarship to a great university. At one level, James knew he was spinning out of control, but he lived in denial because he didn't have the guts to get real with himself about what was happening. The price of denial for James was very, very high. He chose not to see this until his world caved in, and by then it was too late. Now some of you out there may be saying, Jay, I'm not running from the cops. I'm not staggering around drunk at a Taco Bell alongside a highway in a major city. I'm not that bad. Others of you may be saying, hell, that's a slow night. Whether or not you have major screw-ups in your life, you owe it to yourself to start asking some hard questions and take a serious look at how you might be putting yourself at risk or working to defeat yourself through what you're not seeing. Are you denying some bad thinking and behavior? Are you putting obstacles in the road to block you from success? Maybe for you it's as simple as acknowledging that you hate it when your dad calls you sweetie pie in front of your teammates and your girlfriend so you can ask him to stop. It's time to get real about you and everything that's going on in your life, particularly everything that's not working in your life. Have the guts to be honest with yourself. Remember life well too. You create your own experience. Well, through denial, you are creating a far more self-destructive experience than you even knew. Answer the questions. One, what am I doing to put myself or allow myself to be at risk in my life? Number two, what am I doing that's keeping me from succeeding? Number three, how am I sabotaging myself in my relationships with parents and other adults? Number four, what am I doing to miss opportunities that I should be grabbing onto? Number five, what do I need to change about my personality and behavior patterns? Those are just some starter questions. I bet you know the others that you need to ask yourself. Denial works in mysterious ways. If your honest assessments tell you that your life isn't nearly off the ditch like James was, that's great. But the whole idea is to do something before it gets to that situation and circumstance. Denial doesn't just sabotage people like James, who refuse to see major problems. At one point, his problem wasn't that huge, but it became that way through denial and neglect. To get nowhere, follow the crowd. Charlie Brown. One of the most common things we deny, for instance, is the fact that we stop thinking for ourselves and get mindlessly stuck up in the flow of the events around us. I'm talking here specifically about peer pressure. Normal, smart, well-meaning human beings can do the dumbest and most self-destructive acts I've ever seen, all because of peer pressure, the need to be accepted. I can't tell you how many times I've heard adults talking about their child getting into trouble because he or she fell in with the wrong crowd. Now I'm not making excuses for some dumb thing somebody did, and God forbid I get caught agreeing with a bunch of adults. But I have to tell you, I've seen time and time again where friends of mine who knew to be pretty level-headed stopped thinking for themselves and did really dumb things. They did it because they wanted to belong. They did it because they wanted to be cool and hang out with a certain group. They let the need to belong overcome common sense and good judgment. And so they screwed up big time. They were vulnerable to the influence because they were in denial about their motivations. They denied their own warning and coned themselves into believing they really wanted to do the dumb thing. They didn't have the guts to admit that they wanted to belong so badly that they would go along to get along. They abandoned who they were and what they once valued. My dad always said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Ask yourself what things in your life you have done because you felt pressure from your friends. Here's a list to start your thinking. Being defiant and disrespectful to your parents because your friends are. Being disinterested in school because only the nerds care about learning. Drinking at parties because all the cool kids do. Smoking marijuana or doing other drugs because it's the cool thing to do. 
Having sex because it's expected. You don't want to lose the relationship. Sneaking out at night because everybody else is doing it. Lying to your parents about where you are going because everyone else is going to be there. You don't want to be left out. Whether it was something on this list or some other behavior, did you wake up the next day, look in the mirror and say, how did I let that happen? I'll tell you how it happened every time I did it. I denied my own voice, my own values, and substituted the judgment of some doofus for my own. I didn't remember life law one. You either get it or you don't. People who get it think for themselves, because when the stuff hits the fan, Mr. Cole and his buddies never seem to be there to help shoulder the load. This is a difficult issue, I know. On one hand, you do want to try things. You want to take chances. But we all have to remember that there are consequences to our experimentation. There are moral and legal lines that we should never cross. Above all else, next time you are getting sucked in, remember you might do these things with your friends. But when it comes time to pay the price, you pay it alone. Don't be in denial about the power of peer pressure. It's perhaps the greatest influence in your entire life, and you're going to be faced with it daily. If you at least acknowledge to yourself that you are being pressured, then you have a huge advantage. You can anticipate and prepare yourself to deal with it. You can decide ahead of time what to say to fight off the peer pressure. Take pride in the fact that you are not going to let anyone else ruin your life. Take pride in the fact that you know who you are, and you know what you want, and that you are true to your values. Take a minute and list five behaviors that you know you don't want to be a part of, but you feel your peers are influencing you to do. Now list five comments you should be ready to say the next time you feel the pressure. Pretend you're talking to someone who's trying to suck you in. Congratulations, you just took one more step out of denial. The comfort zone isn't too comfy after all. What if you're someone who doesn't feel much peer pressure and in fact doesn't feel much pressure to do anything at all? It can be just as bad, however, to go too far in the other direction and become a total slug. You see, we also live in denial when we fail to admit to ourselves that we are not living up to our potential and are not creating something significant for our lives. What I mean by that is that you stop reaching for a high level, higher level of achievement and accomplishment and pretend that your life is okay. You get up, brush your happy hair, throw on some clothes, drag yourself out of the house, and go through the motions of the day. You think you're comfortable, but you're not as happy as you could be. You're in what I call a comfort zone, and you pretend it's okay. When you're in a comfort zone, you're living a life that's not really satisfying, but it's too comfortable to give up. It's the life where you might be doing okay, but it's a life that also consists of little self-confidence or self-esteem, no sense of pride, and no action or initiative. You are living risk-free. The denial part kicks in because you lie to yourself about everything being great. You whine about parents, teachers, money, and every other excuse, totally denying your role in life. You do it because by being in denial about the quality of your life, you keep yourself safe. If you admit that you want more, you are at a great risk because now you have to go for more. And what if you fall flat? If you admit that you want to do better in school, have better friends, perform better in athletics, or have a better relationship with your parents, and then fail, you have admitted that you are a loser. If you never admit that you want more, not having it won't be so painful. But once you admit it, there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. You are no longer living risk-free. You don't get what you want living in the comfort zone, but at least it's not scary. That's why denial works. Here are a few guidelines that you can use to determine whether or not you are stuck in the comfort zone. You're often bored with yourself. You feel that your accomplishments are pretty worthless. You think your daily after school activities are mostly pointless. You don't seem to enjoy things the way other kids do. You make promises to yourself that you never keep. You have no goals. You're a little scared. You think your life doesn't have much of a purpose. You never challenge yourself. Notice that these are not major problems that can destroy your life in one day, but they are problems that are like slow leaks in a boat. Your own boat won't go down like the Titanic, but slowly it'll sink to the bottom 
and so will your life. As long as you refuse to acknowledge even these small problems, they will gain momentum. As the months and years pass, these behaviors will become habits, habits that will make your life less than what you want. Remember that you are the only person who can change your life. If you want change, you're the one who's got to take action. If events in your life begin to flow differently, it'll be because you have changed what you think, feel, and do. That will never happen unless you acknowledge that you need to make changes. Otherwise, you will stay stuck. It's a simple truth. If you continue to do what you've always done, you will continue to have what you've always had. If you do different, you will have different. Getting out of the comfort zone. It's time to start thinking. What are the problems in your life that you have not been acknowledging? Don't go easy on yourself. Saying what you want to be true about yourself as opposed to what is true. Don't give yourself the benefit of the doubt. You have to ask the hard questions and address the real issues that keep you from having everything you want in life. Be sure that you are dealing with the least of the following. The parts of your personality that aren't working. The parts of your behavior that aren't working. The values and beliefs of yours that aren't working. The relationships you have that aren't working. The following exercises not only help you to confront your denial, but will help you make your first steps getting out of your comfort zone. One, list the three things you are most unhappy with about yourself. What do you hate the most about who you are? For example, my relationship with my parents. Number two, how have you contributed to setting your life up that way? Take ownership in what's happened. For each quality you dislike about yourself, list what you have done to cause that unlikable quality. For example, I'm not willing to listen to them. I blow up at anything. Number three, now describe what your life would be like if an undesirable aspect of your life was gone. For example, if the relationship was now perfect, you may describe it this way. I can talk to my parents about my problems. They listen to me like an adult and respond like an adult. Number four, what is something you can do to move towards your perfect situation? For example, I can refuse to blow up no matter what my parents say. I hope you're real with yourself. It's easy to say, hey, what am I supposed to do? I have no power, I have no control. But think back to life law too. You create your own experience. You do have power and you do have control. If you will acknowledge the areas you need to change, you can aim that power and control like a laser guided missile and start making big changes. But it takes guts to get real with yourself about what needs to change about you and your life. Don't blame your parents. If you're playing it safe and not reaching, then you're lying to and cheating yourself and that's denial. If you aren't careful, you'll find the days turning into weeks, the weeks into months, months into years. And before you know it, you'll be so deep in a hole, you won't know what to do. Being honest means seeing the world and your life clearly. It's seeing the immediate threats that loom over your life and it's seeing the potential problems just forming on the horizon. The power of acknowledgement. One final thing, don't get down on yourself because you're admitting you have problems. Your problems are just problems. You can be a no good slug, but because you have acknowledged what you're dealing with, you already have turned the corner. It doesn't mean that these problems define you. All you're saying is that you have work to do. So get excited. For the first time in your life, you have a great chance to make changes, all because you are acknowledging what needs to be done. By showing the courage and commitment to be honest with yourself and to lay out for yourself exactly how things are, you are going to start breaking out of your comfort zone. Remember the story about Emily at the beginning of this chapter. Well, fortunately, that F on the history test was a huge wake-up call for her. She got real after she received that 43 on her midterm. She acknowledged that she had a problem in history class and took action to fix her problem. She still hates history to this very day. And so do I. But I think one of the things we have to realize is that we don't have to like everything we do. Sometimes we just have to do it. She finally got mature enough to say, history sucks and I absolutely hate it, but I'm gonna have to work, have to get to work, or I'm going to be taking it again and again and again. She had remained in denial about her ownership of the problem, 
and continued to blame her poor grade on the boring teacher. She probably would have failed the class and wound up having to take it again, but she didn't. She realized that there was no way to make a good grade. With all one with one all night drug assisted cramming session. So she decided to take control of her life. She said, If I don't want to fail, I better start listening in class, reading the textbook instead of magazines, and staying awake while the teacher is talking, no matter how boring he is. It was tough for her to get out of her comfort zone, but it paid off. When the final came around at the end of the semester, Emily was ready. She made a high B and passed the course. Mission accomplished. Emily took action, which is what you need to do. If you acknowledge and then take action to fix whatever problems you are facing in your life, then I promise you, you are on task in your life. You are dealing with things that matter. You are refusing to stay unhappy for another day. And that's what the next life law is all about, taking action. Light bulbs. If you don't ever acknowledge that something is bothering you, it will never change. Don't spoil your chances for success by denying your problems. Peer pressure may likely be an issue that you need to acknowledge and deal with. It is often easy but less rewarding to stay in the comfort zone. Break out of that comfort zone and you will be rewarded for it.